In this video, we are going to learn how to grow like Jack and the Beanstalk and grow green beans in a vertical system. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. And the world of beans is really interesting and you can go deep into this world. Trust me, I've been deep in the bean world for a long time now, but we're bringing it back to basics. Green beans, bush beans grown in a vertical system, which means it's basically applicable to anyone watching this video, whether you're in a large rural space or a small apartment garden, you can do it and I will show you how to do it. So we're gonna go back in time to when these beans were but simple seeds, and honestly, there's a lot of them here, and go through exactly how I grew them. So before we get into it, cultivate that like button, and I will personally bless you with bushels and bushels of beans on your very first harvest, and let's get into the video. So if you've grown beans before, or you have any familiarity with it, you might be wondering why I've actually started the beans in seed starting trays instead of just direct sowing. Well, partially because I seed start almost everything unless I have to direct sow it, like a carrot or something like that just really does really well when it's direct sown. I find that beans transplant perfectly fine and it allows me a continuous harvest and allows me to plan my garden better when I'm continually starting and transplanting. So I will say that you don't have to direct sow beans, uh, although it certainly can work perfectly fine. Another thing that I will say is you don't even actually have to soak beans. Beans will germinate completely fine if you put them in a nice uh, moist seed starting mix and just wait a little bit longer. For me, instead of going through the process of soaking and starting, I prefer to just put them in my seed starting tray, moisten them up, and I like to put in two beans per cell. And you can see if you look closely, some of these have been chopped at the root level. And that's because both came up and I chose the more viable seed and we're going from there. So I just wanna guarantee something comes up. That's how I do all my seed starting. Uh, and you can see every single one of these tray inserts, except for these, which are a different plant, all of these have come up and the ones that haven't are about to. So perfect germination, really healthy looking, and you wanna transplant them relatively early because beans have kind of a weird settling in period where they start to yellow until they kind of connect to, I guess, the overall soil structure and really start pulling nitrogen from the soil. So when you transplant your beans, you can often find that they yellow like maybe for the, the first week or so afterwards. And I find that to be somewhat normal. And then once their root system really establishes in the new home, then they're gonna be completely fine, especially if that soil has a decent amount of nitrogen. So what we're gonna do is pop these out and transplant them into our green stock garden. So in this phase, what you wanna do is you wanna just think about it as if you're plugging it in. Uh, you're not transplanting per se, is like plugging it into the matrix of the soil life that's already going on in here. And so what I've got here is beans. Uh, I do prefer some sort of mycorrhizal inoculant. I'm not 100% sure on exactly how effective it is. I know that generally, just anecdotally, my results have been better. So I'm using a little mycos, uh, which is a mycorrhizal inoculant. And what we're gonna do is I come through with like a thin knife into a moistened seed cell insert. And let's just inspect the root system of this very first bean that we're gonna pop out here. So we're not root bound, nice healthy white roots, looks very, very nice. And when it comes to beans, I like to transplant them a little deep. So if I've got the uh, stem coming out of the soil right here, but the seed leaves are right there, I'm gonna transplant them to the point at which the seed leaves start. So we're gonna go ahead and dig a little bit deeper here and come in and really just plug this in and then cover it up and we've left maybe maybe a centimeter or so before uh, the seed leaf and voila we've transplanted that in perfectly fine more beans are on the way but for now we have a couple tiers of this planted out now we just gotta wait see how they settle in and we will be back in maybe a week or so to troubleshoot if there are any issues it's been about two weeks now, guys, and honestly, these are coming in so well. We haven't had any of the usual settling in problems that you normally have with beans, where you have yellowing on these lower leaves. It had some really good growth, and as you can see, a nice, vibrant green, which is what you're looking for when you're growing beans, bush beans. You want it to have this nice, beautiful green color. So that's what we're looking at, and honestly, 
every single one of these looks pretty much perfect. At this point, we are still letting them put on a bunch more vegetative growth. You can see the leaves are coming out like crazy here. And we're gonna be back in maybe another week or two and see if we've got some flowers and early, early pods. It's been about 30 days since we last talked here on the video. Let's check in on our beans. Might be time to harvest, but the first thing I want you to do is use your eyes. Look at this tower. What do you see? Observation is the number one skill in the garden. If you notice things, you can then fix them. Now, I will say we did have some spider mite problems up top, which I prevented pretty quickly early on, but some of these plants did get some damage that they've struggled to come back from. But what I see is I see that the bottom bean plants are much darker green than the top ones, almost in a perfect gradient. Now, if we move it around, we see that's pretty consistent across the entire tower. Why would that be? Well, the number one problem you're running into when you're growing in most container gardens is you have drainage and then you have runoff of soluble nutrients. So what I'm thinking is happening here is that the nitrogen, specifically probably the nitrogen, is running off and settling down here in the bottom, which is causing these to be nice and green and causing these to be a little lighter. Now I can compensate there by manually watering some of these top ones with a little bit of liquid soluble nitrogen, adding that in to counteract that. That's just something I noticed. But now let's go ahead and take a look at our beans. Top, we still have great bean formation, and this is a younger plant, but we've got some good beans here as we spin it around. Nice beans over here as well. So there's a lot here and it's time to harvest some of these because as you harvest these beans, you're going to spur the growth of further bean production. And that's what you want. You want to maximize your harvest, right? So we've got some really good ones. Like, look at this. This is really nice here. And this is just quality. So I'm all about it. Let's start harvesting. Before we start harvesting, everyone, check out this apron. I designed it in partnership with this company that makes like high-end barista gear, but it has the coolest stuff. I put everything I would ever want as a gardener on here. So I've got my pocket for two tools. You've got your cuttings pouch right here, microfiber. You have a double-sided harvest pocket that you can like snap open and snap shut. Super high quality materials, but anyways, I'm obsessed with it. I think it's epic and it's time to harvest our first bean crop. Drop a comment down below. How many beans do you think I'm gonna get in my first flush of beans? Drop one down below. Who knows, I might give away some seeds to the winner. First bean crop, pretty small, but this is like the earliest you could ever take these beans off. And there's quite a few left, like at least seven times as many of these still developing on the plant. For those of you who guessed in the comments, 33 is the amount in my hand. It's probably about a quarter pound of beans. It's gonna be a nice little dinner, but we'll come back and we'll harvest this again in a couple days. Well, it's been more than a few days since our last harvest. As you can see, just got one of many handfuls of beans in this little satchel here. But those beans in the front yard, they're kind of coming to the end of their life. So what I thought I would do is leave you with a couple top tips for successfully growing beans, some things that I think might help you in your first journey through. So number one, a lot of people will say you should direct sow your beans and you shouldn't transplant them. You certainly can and Honestly, you may wanna try that if it's your very first time. The reason I specifically transplanted earlier in this video is because I'm always replacing stuff in my garden all the time. And so I didn't want to direct sow because that meant I would have had to clear that whole green stock vertical garden out and then wait for them to germinate. What I decided to do was grow something else in there and then harvest that immediately and put my transplants in. But if it's your first time or you're growing in, in a container, then maybe soak the bean seed overnight, 12-ish hours, plop that in the soil and you're gonna have really successful germination. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to watch out for that early stage of life because you can start to see that yellowing, especially on those lower leaves. Don't stress unless you really start to see it go up the rest of the plant. Then you know you probably have some kind of nutrient deficiency or some sort of watering issue at play. But at the beginning, it's okay. It kind of has to get its sea legs, if you will, or its soil legs, I guess, uh, and, and really get established. The next tip and the final one I'll leave you with is once you start to see your bean plants, certainly when they're putting on pods, but even around the time they're putting on flowers, you can take a little bit of extra compost or some organic granular fertilizer, or even a liquid soluble fertilizer, and you can give it a little bit of fertility because as soon as it goes from flowering into producing pods, 
it's pulling energy like crazy out of the soil and it might start sucking the soil dry a little bit. So you can give it just a little bit of extra fertilizer and I think that will really help. But guys, beans are absolutely fantastic. I have, let's just say I've got a meal to make and more than one meal actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to that. I encourage you guys to experiment with the world of beans. It's again, a very wide world. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.